Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. I am in my garage right now. It's late at night, so I don't have the natural sunlight coming in here. Uh, so we'll get into some better light in just a moment. But I wanted to actually show you something. You see here I have a bunch of inventory uh, on these shelves that need to get listed. And I want you to focus on one thing right here. Uh, you've probably seen this in a bunch of my videos if you just look in the background. It's been here for over a year. I actually showed me sourcing it at an estate sale last winter. Uh, this right here is this clothespin bag. And uh, I want to tell you something interesting about it, something that motivated me to list it that I think could help you out. You just have to change your perspective on how you see it. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. Instead of walking past that for a year and looking at it as just a vintage clothespin bag, we are gonna look at it as something else. Now I just have to transform it into that. I'm gonna channel Mumford the Magician from Sesame Street, so a la peanut butter sandwiches. Oh, look at that. The clothespin bag is gone and it's turned into something. What did it turn into? Money. How much money did it turn into? It looks like we've got a $20 bill here. Not just $20, we've got $25. We've got $26. We've got $27. We've got $28. I should also channel the count here. $28. Ah, 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 ah. So now ask yourself the question, if $28 was sitting here like this on this ledge for a year, would you be able to walk by it and never take it off and not use it? I highly doubt it. Yet you and I will sometimes walk by the piece of merchandise that is worth that amount of money for a year or longer because we're not seeing it for the money that it's actually worth. And that's what we need to start doing more. That's what I'm starting to use more to get a lot of things listed that have been sitting around for a while. And I'm gonna show you some other examples of how you could apply this perspective changing mentality to get more items listed. So let's talk about applying this strategy to something that many of you are struggling to deal with, which is an increasingly large death pile of clothing. Or maybe it's not increasing, it's just been sitting there for the longest time and you just can't get yourself motivated to list it. And we could apply this to other death piles as well. I'll talk about that uh, in a second. It doesn't matter, but clothing is just one of the more common ones. So this is a miniature version of a death pile, but you know, we've got your, your regular suspects in here. We've got your, you know, we've got your shirts in here, all sorts of shirts, t-shirts, you know, um, tank tops. We've got, you know, jeans in here. You probably got a bunch of those. You know, here we go. We've got a, like a sweatshirt kind of thing, a jacket. You know, here's like another one. You know, there's all sorts of things. They're all over the place, right? So we got to find a way to not look at these as clothes. What do I mean by that? Well, let's use the strategy I was talking about outside with the laundry bag. I don't want to look at this as clothes. Like, yeah, they are clothes, but I want to look at this instead of what it could turn into money-wise. So let's just say that, and we've got some clothes that fell off of this pile and everything, but let's just say for sake of argument that we've got some designer clothes in here and stuff, and once we get them looking all nice, that this is $200 worth of clothing. Well, when I walk by that death pile, or if I take off maybe a small sample of it that's worth the 200, I am, instead of looking at them as clothes, I'm gonna look at it like this. I'm gonna think of it as money. I'm gonna think of it as 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. That is how I'm going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it like this. I want to look at this in terms of what I'm going to translate it into. And you could use this strategy with anything. I don't care what it is. Books, DVDs, start thinking of the money that you're trying to make and what you could then do with that money. You could do a lot of things with $200, right? Name whatever you want to do. You could put $200 towards that. You could either buy it with that or make a dent in it with that 200 bucks. So, you know, maybe it's something like this. A lot of people buy a bunch of postcards, okay? So I could 
could walk by this bin every single day and just look at it as a bunch of old postcards. And you know, I can't even see any of them except the first one. So I'm not soup. That's a little squeezy squeaky one that I got in there. Um, you know, I could look at it like that and I'm not going to be super motivated to list it if that's all I'm thinking about it as are those postcards. But what if instead of doing that, I look at it like this instead, I'm going to look at it like that. What if I look at it like that? That is going to really change. Let's say I had $200 worth of postcards in it. What do you want to think of it as? What's going to motivate you more? If you think of it this way, or if you think of it as having all those cards, this is the way that's going to motivate me more to list it. So using that strategy has been something that has uh, led me to success in terms of getting things listed that have been sitting around for a while. You know, because again, once you get around to listing that thing and you see that it sells and you see what it's sold for, you say to yourself, my goodness, that's just like I literally had, let's say $20, $30 item. I literally had like 30 bucks just sitting there staring at me for a year. So use that strategy to help you out. Uh, if you try it or if you think it sounds like a good idea, if you never thought of it that way before, let me know down below in the comment section. I've not heard anybody talk about this particular strategy before. Maybe someone has, I don't know, but I'm all about changing the way I think and changing perspective because one of the things I could tell you working as a neuropsychologist is that changing perspective and changing the way you think affects the way you feel. And the way you feel has a lot to do with motivation. So if you want to change your motivation, and I've written a lot, I've published two books related to motivation. I always tell people, don't get them. They're academically based books. You're going to be bored to death if you get them. So they're not like self-help books or anything like that. But it's a topic that I study a lot. And the way you think and the mindset you bring into something is going to really affect how well you could be motivated into accomplishing things. So that's the big thing. Change your mindset, think about things differently and get more productive. So if you think that this video is helpful, let me know by hitting the like button, give it a big thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, put a comment down below if you think this is going to help you out, or if you try it out, come back later on and let me know if it helped you, if it motivated you to get things listed. Let me know what you listed, what sold. I want to hear all those success stories down below in the comment section, because trust me, you know, a month from now, two months from now, a year from now, people are going to look in those comments and they're going to see them and that's going to motivate them if they could see that other people had success with it. Share this video with others if you think this is something that could help them. Make sure you come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and my Instagram account. The links to those things are all below. So I've got two live shows coming up this week. I've got on Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sydney from Posh Boss HQ. We're going to talk about getting started with Poshmark, the differences between Poshmark and eBay, and tips to help you be successful listing on that platform. There's a lot of confusion about it for people who haven't started in it. And so we want to break through some of that and uh, help people uh, reach success on that platform if they would like to go over and try it. And even if you are on it, Sydney is an expert in this area. She has over 10,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel, which just focuses on Poshmark or mostly focuses on Poshmark. So uh, come over there. You'll probably learn some things even if you uh, currently sell on the platform. And then Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll have Don the Auction Professor on for another Be on the Lookout item show. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about bolos and all sorts of things that you know you should be on the lookout for when you are outsourcing that you could use in your reselling business and continue to bring in those profits. So I hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. I'll see you at the next one. See you at the live shows. Come by, say hi, join in the chat. Take care.